we have seen there before. And of course, uh, uh, social distance would be called for in order in this circumstance. So he may just simply get into the armored vehicle, onto the chopper, and then back to the uh, White House. Uh, White House correspondent Peter Alexander is at Walter Reed right now. Peter, what can you tell us? Well, Lester, you just saw the president's photographer exit that uh, front of Walter Reed, which demonstrates that in many ways this is a photo opportunity that the president is planning to embrace as he exits today, an opportunity to try to say to America that he is back, as his own doctor said today, to try to project strength and to try to return to form with the campaign in its waning weeks, now less than a month before Election Day here in the United States. This has been a remarkable scene, and here yeah. I think there is there's Donald yeah. Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you think you might be a super spreader, Mr. President? President taking no questions, uh, but in a, certainly a demonstration, of a sign of strength. Uh, walking by himself, uh, patting, uh, gently tapping the railings as he came down, but walking uh, virtually unassisted as he now goes into that armored SUV, much like the one that took him on the tour yesterday of the neighborhood to greet well-wishers. Uh, it'll be a short ride just to the other side of the hospital where Marine One is uh, ready and waiting for him on a helipad. And then if it is anything like a few days ago, it'll be about a 10-minute ride uh, to the White House. The president returning to a White House that's very different, as we have noted, a number of staffers, uh, people connected to his campaign, and the Republican Party have tested positive uh, for coronavirus. So he will be certainly confronting that. Uh, doctors not exactly uh, explaining in great detail uh, how he will be isolated, uh, what the circumstances of uh, uh, of how he will be staying in, in the White House will go under these circumstances. Of course, uh, his wife, Melania Trump, also tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, at the last report we had, her symptoms uh, were considered mild. She did not uh, make the trip to the hospital uh, on Friday. And as far as we know, she is doing relatively okay. And you can see that uh, uh, motorcade beginning to move just a short distance. Uh, there have been a lot of people who have been camped out of the hospital, uh, many supporters, some protesters uh, who have uh, been, you know, creating a, certainly a lot of attention there over the three days the president has been at Walter Reed. Uh, they, as we reported a bit earlier, had been moved to the other side of the street, a little bit farther from the helipad. Uh, but they will be certainly in a position to watch it leave. They were certainly able to see it uh, make its approach and land uh, within the last half hour. This is obviously a very long shot camera here, so uh, you pretty fuzzy picture, but the presidential SUV uh, making its way to the helipad. I believe uh, Peter is, uh, is still with us. Uh, Peter, the, the president, I think all I heard him say was thank you very much. Did you hear anything else? No, that's all that I heard, and it wasn't clear whether the president would have any remarks. Really, it was that photo that he wanted. He wanted to demonstrate he has, as he has over the course of the last several days, that he is in form, able to work, and continues with his routine. But what's noticeable is how little we really know about his condition at this time. His doctor refusing to provide any details about those lung scans, which is significant because it would potentially be revelatory about whether he has any COVID-related effects, possibly pneumonia. Yeah, even as he heads back to the White House, president, the president is taking a series of an antibody, uh, experimental antibody cocktail. He's taking an antiviral drug, remdesivir, also taking dexamethasone. That is a steroid, Lester, as we've been reporting, that is typically only used for severely ill coronavirus patients. So even as the White House says that he really has only had sort of mild symptoms, a mild bout with this, the way they tried to describe it, he is... Um, he is being prescribed drugs that would be used for a much sicker patient right now. To give you a sense of the scene right here, you can see some of those folks behind me. This, Lester, has been a wild scene over the course of today and, frankly, over the course of the last several days. There have been what started with dozens turning into hundreds of Trump supporters arriving here from all around this region for an opportunity to try to cheer on um, 
the man that they love, the man that they say deserves four more years in office. And then protesters arrive, police arrived as well. It's just really been part of what in many ways has become the reality TV presidency over the course of the last uh, several yeah. years in the eyes. Of yeah, many. Peter, we just want to know we Again, just saw we one, just right? saw the president uh, climb his way up the stairs. Yeah, he just climbed up the stairs in his Regeneron antibody cocktail, the, the monoclonal antibody cocktails they gave him, because that also gives your immune system a boost. So it's trying to actively fight off the virus at that point. But the third one they gave him, and this is the one that raised some red flags, is the dexamethasone. That's a steroid. And per NIH protocol, that should only be given to patients who are on ventilators or who are on supplemental oxygen in the hospital. And they specifically say it is not recommended for patients that are not on a ventilator, not on supplemental oxygen. Oxygen. But other experts are saying, you know, at some point, sometimes, even if they're not at that stage, but they're severely ill, then we'll give them that dexamethasone anyway. But it's definitely reserved for severely ill, not mild or moderate. So I think what we're seeing here is the medication they're giving them is reserved for patients who are sicker than they're telling us he is. And it's important with a steroid because if the steroid is given early on, when they're not that sick, it actually can make the patient worse. And so they're going to be very careful with that. So I, I think, again, what you're seeing, what you're hearing is necessarily what's going on behind the scenes, Lester. All right, uh, Dr. John Torres, as we watch uh, the Chopper Marine One make its way toward Washington, let me bring in Hallie Jackson right now. Hallie, as I noted a few minutes ago, he's returning to the White House, but it is not the same place that he left as more uh, COVID cases uh, linked to, to the White House and Republican Party are, are popping up. What do we know about the number of cases right now? Well, we know, Lester, the number is 14. That is the cases linked to the White House or to the campaign. That includes the president and the first lady. And it includes the White House press secretary, Kayleigh McEnany, who today uh, said that she tested positive for the coronavirus. We've learned today, too, that two of her deputies have also tested positive. The White House so far has not said how many West Wing staffers have actually tested positive so far. But I have to tell you, Lester, the White House feels different in more ways than one, right? It is fairly empty in there. It is quieter than I can remember seeing it, you know, not on a, a weekend when the president's out of town, let's say here, uh, on a weekday where there is a lot of news happening because many staffers are working from home. Some of them who have perhaps not been directed to quarantine are doing that themselves, choosing to stay away from some of their colleagues. Some have come in. Uh, I spoke with one White House official here today. He was wearing a mask. I was wearing a mask outside more than six feet. But the question was, why did you still show up to work knowing that this is happening here? The argument from the White House is that they are essential workers, basically. They've been deemed essential to the functioning of government, basically. And there is some work that they feel they have to come into the office to be able to do. So we see the, the, the helicopter, Lester, on its way here to where I am on the White House. It'll land on the other side of the building from where I'm standing, on the South Lawn. Uh, and then the president will head inside. I am told by a source familiar with the plans, and I emphasize the plans, that the president is expected to isolate in the residence. So that's not the West Wing. Now, that could change, let's say, in a few days if the president is still feeling good, decides he wants to go to the Oval Office, perhaps that could change. But at this moment, that is the expectation, that the president will be in the residence. As we've been talking about, and, and as a, Dr. John referenced a moment ago, the president coming home to the White House is not like me going home to my house in Washington or you going home to your house where you are. Uh, it is a very different experience. He will have 24-7 medical care. He has access to a full medical suite. This is a fairly advanced. It is not a hospital, right? The White House is, is simply not a hospital, but it does have a level of care that... Uh, pretty much any other American does not have access to. The question of how long the president will need to isolate once he gets back here, right? That is another question here. And we got some insight into that from the president's physician today. Now, typically, the CDC guidelines suggest 10 days for a patient from the start of the onset of symptoms. Dr. Conley said we'll be checking, the, the, the physicians will be checking the president's viral load. They need to make sure that he is not carrying a viral load in, in English, that he is not contagious. That's kind of the point of this. That could happen maybe a little before those 10 days, maybe a little after. We know that the president is eager not just to get out of Walter Reed, to get out of the hospital, Lester. I spoke with one uh, source tonight who said he is feeling cooped up and he's ready to go. He's also eager to get out, frankly, of this coronavirus bubble that he's in. He is eager to hit the road. He is eager to travel. He tweeted just before we came on the air that he is ready to hit the campaign trail. He just can't do that, though, until he's cleared to be able to 
to travel, Lester, for safety, for responsibility, for a number of reasons. And that is something that Dr. Conley addressed right. today. He would not commit to a timeline, uh, but he did say, you know, that the, the proper indications do have to be in place for that. There have been, as we've noted, some credibility questions, though, given that Conley has acknowledged that he painted a rosier picture over the weekend of the president's health. We know that Friday morning his condition was spiking a fever, his oxygen levels dropped. That was not revealed to the public at the time that it happened, Lester. As you look at this shot now of Marine One flying over Bethesda, it's about a 10 minute flight, so the president should be arriving here fairly soon, just about sunset here in Washington, Lester. All right, Hallie, thanks very much. I want to bring in NBC News medical contributor Dr. Kavita Patel and, and talk about what the president's life may look for look, look like, even as we march to the election 29 days from now. A, a patient like that, I, I assume you're, you're worried about a, a, a worsening of condition, but also we just saw, just we just got a glimpse of what it's like for a president to move, just that movement from the hospital uh, to the helicopter, the number of people involved, the number of people that will receive him here. Uh, what will his ability be like to interact with the others around him? Yeah, Lester, these are exactly the questions that I think everyone should be asking, and especially the people around the president. As you stated, it's very natural. This is a president who likes to be out there. He gets energy and feedback from a crowd, but it is un usual to have a circumstance where that very crowd is something that he can pose a risk to. So the next several days are critical. Not only will his traditional vital signs, the heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen, all the things we've been talking about be monitored very closely. But Lester, you're also going to look for just changes in affect, meaning does he seem like he's a little different? We've already heard that in Bedminster, he seemed a little lethargic, and so meaning a little more tired, and we're going to be looking for those types of changes in mood or behavior. And then even weeks out, Lester, I see patients who are months out of their COVID-19 diagnosis totally healthy, even very young, and they have kind of a post-COVID-19 syndrome, various ailments, joints and pains and headaches. So we will need to continue to keep a very close watch over the president, the first lady, any of the people that have been infected and not make any assumptions. We know this virus is very humbling, and I think that's exactly the attitude we have to take in thinking about the president's course of illness. All right, we saw Marine One passing uh, by Washington Reagan uh, National Airport, now, now passing the Washington Monument on its final approach and descent uh, onto the White House South Lawn, where we fully expect to watch the president again walk out under his own power and return to the White House. You saw a second chopper there that usually flies alongside in some kind of a support role. It's now moved aside, and Marine One, uh, designated as, as Marine One when the president is on board, is now uh, making its approach, and you see it descending onto the south lawn of the White House. As we, uh, we watch the chopper, we'll get another shot here shortly, but as we watch it pivot around, uh, this means that we will not likely not see much of the president because he'll exit from the left side of the chopper. Uh, typically what happens is we've got a pool crew that is going to video uh, the president's uh, stepping off the chopper and into the residence. That will get turned around very quickly and shared with all the networks, so we would expect to see that in just a few brief uh, moments, but we will uh, see the Marine Guard come out. We will um, likely see the president uh, at least part of his uh, his legs, maybe as he uh, as he exits the chopper.
So just a little more than 72 hours from when the president departed uh, the White House on a day that it was later acknowledged he had a drop in his blood oxygen level and was showing uh, other COVID-19 symptoms. The president has now returned to the White House to the residence where he will continue to convalesce. His doctors held a news briefing today and said they believe that he is uh, medically able, that he's indicated all the, all the things they look for when they decide whether to discharge a patient. We have noted uh, there are some questions about the aggressiveness of the uh, treatment regimen he's received that have set off red flags among uh, some uh, physicians who have followed this very closely. Nonetheless, uh, doctors said they were in agreement about the decision to let him uh, return home and to convalesce and uh, to isolate. And of course, we don't quite know what isolate will mean in the case of the president. Um, noticing the uh, doors being open right now at the uh, uh, White House residence. We don't know if we're going to see members of his family or... Uh, Hallie Jackson, uh, I don't know if you're able to watch with me that uh, balcony door that just opened. Uh, do we know if there will be a special greeting of the president there? You know, we don't know for sure, Lester, um, but it, given what we've seen so far with the optics of President Trump wanting to be seen, wanting to show the American public that, yes, he can, you know, walk out on his own, he can appear on his own, I wouldn't be surprised. I picked up, Lester, at the same time as you did on the activity there uh, up on the balcony. I will note, typically, this is not a shot that our viewers often see. We don't normally have this shot up and ready to go because we do have reporters on the other side of Marine One where the president is departing. I'm watching the bottom of the screen there to see if we can get any indication as to when the president will be stepping off the helicopter. Lester, I have to tell you, at a moment like this, these are frankly some of the most scrutinized steps that President Trump has ever taken and possibly will ever take. The shot of him coming down the stairs, tapping that railing, as you noted, you have to imagine that the president was hyper aware that the eyes of the country were on him at that moment. A slip, a grip, any of that was going to be read into, of course, by people across the country. Uh, and, he, and you have to think he knew uh, that that was going to be the case. Here again, the optics are important. Ever since, Lester, I think back to 72 hours ago when you and I were doing this almost to the hour, I was watching this same helicopter take off off the South Lawn here and head to Walter Reed. We're now watching it set, uh, watching it come back now, uh, 72 hours roughly later. And even from the very beginning of this, Lester, it was important for the White House to show the president walking on his own power, getting into the helicopter on his own power. The president is obviously not answering I think questions. Oh, is that? Yeah, I think, uh, Hallie, I think we're watching the president now walking up the stairs I to the that. residence. That's not a yeah. way he normally goes in. No. Uh, again, uh, the walking up the stairs, uh, certainly a, a, an image that he would be eager to display. And then he will uh, make his way to that, uh, those French doors draped in American flags. We see this shot, Lester, folks might be familiar, uh, around Easter, at the Easter egg roll. When they come out, the president and first lady, and, and wave to the people who have assembled on the South Lawn. That's just to give some context where this is. People might be thinking, I can barely see the president. He looks so small on the screen. We will have a better shot of this. Again, we are using a very long lens here from far away to be able to bring this shot to you live. There is going to be a better uh, look at the president here, so we'll, we'll be able to see sort of how he is, how he's moving. He's spending a decent amount of time out there, Lester. I'm having a little trouble myself seeing if he's still waving or making hand gestures, but he is obviously wanting to, frankly, soak in this moment. I can hear now the, the rotors getting louder, which makes me think Marine One is about to take off. But you you can see his photographer there coming in. It looks like on the left side of the screen with the American flags flanking him. I'm told, Lester, that as the president is isolating uh, at the White House, we should expect and we can expect to continue to see appearances like we've seen so far as he's been spending time at Walter Reed. He's blasted out every day that he's been there. Videos on Twitter, for example. He did that drive by over the weekend. I'm told that the president will want to continue to make these appearances during the perhaps roughly 10 days uh, or six days left now that he is in isolation to be able to send that message to the American people. It looks as though he might be waiting now, Lester, for Marine One to be taking off and our fabulous crew out uh, here outside the White House try to zoom in as much as they possibly can. We're going to see the president obscured by Marine One as it lifts off. And the president remains on the balcony. 
So Marine One will go, Lester, and then when President Trump walks back into the residence, it is a question mark of when we will see him next, as it looks like he perhaps delivers a salute there. He is the figure, of course, in the middle of the screen, uh, flanked by those American flags. So the president will now head inside the residence with a wave to the assembled pool reporters down there. Not sure if he's saying anything, yelling, unclear, but we'll be able to tell the audio once we do get what's called Lester Tate playback when those reporters run that video right back into the rack room here at the White House and feed it out to us. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say that the images we see, we will see a lot, uh, certainly on the news, but probably in other places, because it certainly plays to a narrative uh, that the president uh, seems to have embraced about defeating uh, COVID-19. Keep in mind, 72 hours ago, he was taken by helicopter, uh, a very sick man. Uh, he's back now. Uh, doctors saying that's okay, that he's, he's in good enough shape. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we will continue to, to watch and monitor uh, his condition. And uh, what happens now? Again, what does isolation look like? This is a, a tape from just a few minutes ago. You see the president right side of your screen walking up those stairs. He would normally uh, come and go from the lower door, um, but uh, comes up and spends several minutes uh, outside the open French doors, the ch uh, chandelier lit uh, the American flags and uh, pausing for what appeared to be a uh, photo opportunity and to certainly salute those uh, who were gathered on the on the lawn before entering the residence itself. These are, uh, again, live pictures here. Uh, this is, uh, again, not the shot you'll be seeing a lot of because uh, the pool camera crew has uh, has been uh, up close, being able to take many of these images. And we will see them. They will get turned around for greater distribution very, very quickly. Uh, usually in circumstances like this, you don't see the entire White House press uh, crew, but rather a pool of camera operators and journalists uh, uh, who, uh, who s serve basically on behalf of all uh, news outlets. All right. Uh, Hallie Jackson, again, is on the other side of the White House. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's, Lester, we don't, is that the president that just came out on the left side? I, I'm trying to tell Lester, um, but I have to say, I don't know if somebody can run back and look at that video. It looked as though the president may have actually taken off his mask before he walked into the residence. Again, it is hard to tell from the camera angle uh, uh, that we have. It looks like he's come back out again. Yep. So, it's, it's a little bit hard to, say, to, to discern what we're seeing. Right. And, and by the way, we, we've never seen this before, right? We're, we're walking through this live on the air because this is not something that happens uh, at the White House. It looks as though, Lester, the president has his back to us, I believe. But again, I do think it's worth noting that it appeared he had at some point perhaps removed his mask, which is obviously significant uh, given that the president has an active contagious virus currently based on the assessment from his doctors. Uh, it looks as though there are some staff members I can see to the left of the screen uh, up on the Truman balcony there. Uh, but this is certainly unexpected for the president to be spending so much time out here. And I'm wondering if our colleagues who are part of the pool who are much closer to the president had already gone back inside or if they are still out there getting the shot, Lester. Well, if he if he did uh, remove his his mask, um, it, it's 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 simply hard to comprehend given uh, yeah. what has happened not only to him uh, but to more than a dozen other people who have uh, tested positive for COVID-19. Um, it sounds but over as though over 210,000 Americans have died. I'm looking at uh, reports from our colleagues in the pool. They are sending emails as well. Uh, and it sounds as though he did uh, remove his mask at some point before walking back into the residence, Lester. And so uh, that is certainly notable, as you point out here. Uh, I'm being told that the president did, at least from the pool, as we try to get another shot. I can't tell if it's back on now, Lester, or what. As he's I think many Americans could only shake their heads uh, out of those circumstances. Uh, we don't we don't know who the other individuals are that have been appearing in that in that uh, window. Again, this is video from a few moments ago. Uh, it's it's hard to know. Obviously, Secret Service, but hard to know who he's been interacting with there uh, in in front of the window. And I have to say, Lester, really delighted along. to be home. 
Yeah, yes, and I just want to quickly note that what we've heard from White House officials and, frankly, medical staff is that anybody who has interacted with President Trump has had on f what they describe as full protective equipment. So that means N95 masks. It means other protective gear as well. That was a question as we were seeing these videos of, of President Trump in pictures inside Walter Reed. Uh, and in those images, he was not wearing a mask. And the question came up, well, how are you capturing those images and what kind of protective equipment are the people around him wearing? It also came up in that drive-by. It looks like maybe Lester he might be shooting some kind of a video or taking some sort of photo. That is something that we often see the president do. Uh, and I would be uh, dollars to donuts. We end up seeing that on the president's Twitter page, if that's the case, at some point later on tonight. Uh, I would note, too, the issue of protective gear came up during the president's drive-by on Sunday when he cruised past supporters with his agents in the front seat there wearing at least some level of protective equipment. Here's the video from the president. All right. Uh, Hallie, this is, this, is the, yeah, this is the full video now shot moments ago. We'll, we'll let it play it out. In a moment, uh, it's not unlike his recent trip to a church across the street from the White House during uh, Black Lives Matter protests. The president obviously trying to make a very strong statement of strength here, but removing his mask, albeit maybe no one in front of him, is clearly making a, 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 a statement, uh, perhaps a symbol of strength, perhaps a symbol, symbol of defiance. Uh, but a man who was rushed to the hospital in a helicopter just three days ago facing COVID-19, which is a death sentence for a lot of people, uh, taking his mask off and standing and posing for pictures on the balcony of the residence. It's a, it's a remarkable sight. Fortunately, our tape loses. Uh, it, our, our tape, unfortunately, loses that shot of what happens when it gets back up. Is this a live shot? I think this is still a live, a live shot. You see the president there. Um, he seems to be mingling with individuals. We can't tell who they are from this very, very long lens shot. And people seem to be coming and going. Um, let me bring in uh, Dr. John Torres. Um, this is hard, Dr. John, to, to watch, to watch that. Um, what symbol does that send? 
And unfortunately, I think it sends the symbol that we don't want it to send. If you remember on his video, he said he's learned a lot about COVID because of his illness, and he's got real learning, not necessarily book learning, and that he was going to come out with some information that we could all use. I don't think that's the information we want, that taking off the mask, I think, just gives the wrong message to people. And, and I think here, the point being that there, were, there are four things we know work, mask being one of them, social, social distancing, washing your hands, open windows to ventilate. He's taking one of those and saying, you know, it's not all that important. And that, that as, a, as somebody who is, uh, public health has always been important to them, is a, a little disturbing. And hopefully he continues to give the message that the mask is important and doesn't do necessarily what he's doing there. And there weren't people around him, granted, like you mentioned, but at the same time, people are going to look at that and say, you know, maybe masks aren't as important as we thought they were just one or two days ago. Yeah, and Dr. John, let, let's let's talk about the whole mask thing. I mean, right now I'm standing here on national television, not wearing a mask. Audience can't see, but I can tell you that no one's closer than you know, nine, ten feet from me right now in an outdoor setting. Um, uh, I mean, I know the science continues to evolve. Um, President standing on a on a balcony, you could argue that there's there's very little risk. Uh, but but what what should we know? Well, Lester, there's a huge difference here, and one of the big differences is that you did not test positive for COVID-19 four or five days ago. You have not been on a triple drug therapy at Walter Reed Hospital to treat your COVID-19, and you're only four, you're only five or six days into your treatment. We know that you're still shedding virus at this point, and so for somebody to take off a mask and shed virus at this point is different than you being out there, being completely asymptomatic, most likely not shedding, but at the same time social distancing. And one of the things about the mask, and I want to make sure people understand this because it's a message that we've been trying to get across for months is the mask does protect you to a little bit but its main point is to pr protect other people from you and in this case president trump who we know has covid 19 at this point needs to do what he needs to do to protect everybody from getting that covid 19 including those around him and so he had the mask off granted nobody around him but then he walks into the white house i didn't see him put his mask back on he may or may not have but walking in without a mask into in indoor space where people are around, not necessarily social distancing, that put, puts the other people at risk and that sends the wrong message. All right, you're looking at, uh, you were looking at momentarily a video from a uh, shot within the last several minutes of the president. Uh, if you're just joining us, he uh, has returned to the White House, Marine One uh, airlifting the president back to the White House. His doctors held a briefing today and said they were all in agreement that he met all the objectives to be uh, qualified, if you will, uh, to be released for uh, convalescence at home. And keep in mind, as we pointed out, his home is not like our homes. They've got a full working uh, medical facility there. Still, we're not going to be able to forget that three days ago, even with that uh, medical equipment, they felt they needed to get him to a hospital, acknowledging later that uh, at least two times his blood oxygen level fell into uh, uh, what they considered uh, danger zone levels, uh, below 93 percent, I believe, was, was the figure. Uh, he has also been put on some rather aggressive uh, drug therapies, antibody, uh, experimental antibody uh, therapy, um, as well as some other medical interventions that are normally reserved for those with severe cases of COVID-19. Um, and, and Dr. John, let me just one more question. What, what is what is the end of a COVID-19 sickness look like? I mean, is there a, there's obviously a beginning. Is there an end or is it uneven? You know, that's a great question. And the answer is it's uneven because everyone's going to be different. We know that the CDC says once you start symptoms 10 days later, they don't consider you contagious if your symptoms have improved and you're fever free for 24 hours. But that's only if your symptoms have improved. So we know that there are some people that continually have symptoms. On the average, mild, if you have a mild case, it's a couple weeks. If you have moderate to severe cases, it can be up to six weeks before you fully recover. And then some people recover only to get worse weeks or even a month later and that is what is one of the things that complicates this whole process of the disease it's simply a virus that we're learning a lot about it's a virus that's new to us and it's a virus that we have to take very seriously for the long haul
Yeah, well, we certainly we certainly hope the president will have a, a speedy recovery uh, for what he has gone through. Uh, Dr. John, thank you. And thank you all for joining us. We're going to return now to your scheduled programming. For some of you, that's NBC Nightly News already in progress. And please join me a bit later on for a town hall live from Miami with presidential candidate Joe Biden at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. I'm Lester Holt. For all of us at NBC News, thank you for watching and good night.